We're live on Spiritual Psychics TV with Paul Bannister and his guests for Spiritual Talk. Hello everyone and welcome to Spiritual Talk here on our home at SBTV. How are we? It's six o'clock, it's Thursday evening. So glad you're here with us tonight. Guys, we've got another great guest this evening. But before we introduce our brilliant guest, come and say hello. Let us know where you are, where you're coming in from. And hopefully I should be able to see the comments any second now. Richard says hello as well. Richard is here. He's here alongside me with our guest as well. So um yes. Yeah. Yeah, I do wish you could hear Richard, then he could be a part of our show. So unfortunately, you can't hear Richard. He's in my ear and he's just said, Bill is live from eight o'clock tonight. Don't miss. It's the last show this evening. So don't miss that. Um, I'm still waiting for the comments to come up. So, oh, here we go. Oh, Richard's trying his hardest in the background. Hi. Um, oh, serendipity. It said hi. Where are you coming in from? And Terry, Louise. Hi, guys. Good. Uh, thank you for joining us. Hi, Laura. How are you doing? It's good to see you, Laura. And hello, Debbie. And uh, and guys, tonight we've got a great guest. Oh, we've still got people. The comments are coming through thick and fast now. Hi, Robert. He's coming in from Cardiff. Let us know where you're coming in from, guys. We do love to know that we're international. Hello, Kayla. Hello. And where are you coming in from, Kayla? I'm so excited about our guest. I kind of want to get into it pretty much straight away. Um, and Laura said, hello, she's coming in from all the way over from Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight our guest is the brilliant Richard Stuttle. He is an artist, author and spirit artist, not to confuse the two, medium and healer. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm I'm, I'm so sorry. I've, I've kind of bombed this already, Richard. I've, I wanted to get you straight in. Hi, hi, Richard. Welcome to Spiritual Talk on SBTV. Thank you, Paul. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we always like to know a little bit about our guests. Can you give us a little bit of background, please? What you do? What I do? Um, it's, it's a difficult question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so I do a bit of painting. Painting has been a staple all the way through um, from childhood. Obviously, my father's an artist, so... I've been surrounded by art since um, since I was born, really. Um, never told that I shouldn't draw, that how to draw, just, just left to my own devices. So creativity was very much in our household. Um, early career, trained as a chef, creativity wow. came out in, in that way. Um, and then as we've moved through, I suppose the healing has become really important. Um, back in 2002, my sister passed a spirit. That really opened the door for me to spirituality, mediumship, asking the questions of where do you go when you pass the spirit. Um, and from that, that journey has unfolded really with the spirit art, with the mediumship, with the understanding of where we are and purpose of life and, and all those bigger questions you start to ask, you know. Richard, you've just covered about 30 years really quickly there. <laughs> <laughs> really quickly. I was trying to keep up with you. I'm trying to write down some notes here. <laughs> can, can we start and, and i just want to remind our audience you know we've got richard here this is your opportunity to ask him anything you like well within reason of course but ask him anything you like guys so send your questions in ask richard i wanted to talk about uh caroline and her passing and the wonderful work you've done around that since then of course of course yeah i mean no family should ever have to go through anything like that. So um, for people who don't know, my sister was uh, 19 and really excited about life. She'd just finished college and was on her way to university, thought, I'm going to take a gap year. I'm going to travel to Australia. I'm going to go and, and have the time of my life. Um, her and a friend went off and a few months into their travels, they started in Sydney, worked their way up to a place called Bundaberg. Um, which is halfway up the East Coast, um, sleepy little town and um, lovely little place, actually. Lovely, lovely place. Famous for two things, Bundaberg Rum, which um, I've sampled and can say that it is wonderful. And uh, Mon Repos, which is a turtle sanctuary where the turtle. Mm -hmm. So amazing little town. 
Um, she made her way up there and then one evening she was going over into the town and um, had an evening in the town, walking back over a bridge towards a campsite where she was staying. A gentleman came, and I say gentleman in the loosest possible sense, came yeah. over and um, wanted her belongings. She wasn't willing to let them go. There was a struggle and he threw her over the bridge. Oh, it's I, yeah. What can you say about that? It's uh, yeah. It's a horrific thing that, that any family had to go through. Um, the loss of a, a daughter um, is unimaginable. Yeah. Um, I can say that the loss of a sibling is also horrific. Um, it's, it's not just uh, you know, part of you. It's, it's the future times that have been taken from you. It's her future life and her options and her possibilities and what she would have achieved. Absolutely. So, we felt that Caroline's light was so strong. We felt that Caroline um, had such an energy when she was in this, this world that uh, we wanted to do something. We wanted to still encourage people to travel. We wanted them to just do so with safety in mind. So we yeah. created back in 2002, Caroline's Rainbow Foundation, um, a travel safety charity, uh, entirely voluntary led organization. And our aim was just to encourage people to travel, but to do so with safety in mind. So that has evolved over the last 20 years, um, where we talk in schools, we talk to students, we talk to back, uh, back year, backpackers, gap year students, um, anybody who's going for a traveling experience, whether that be in the UK or outside the UK. And we try to just explain to them the importance of their life, the importance of reducing risk, um, and how they can maximize their experience. We want to encourage people to travel. It's really important. You know, it's, it's, um, there's, there's many travel quotes that are so inspiring, but they're all true. Yeah. You know, it's, it enriches your life. Yeah. Um, so the charity has gone from strength to strength. We've been very privileged. And um, back in 2021, I managed to write a book um about the about the sort of the 20 year milestone of the charity the milestones that we'd achieved over the years um how safety information has evolved and how people understand it more now with a mindset rather than the bullet point list of do's and don'ts you know so yeah. we talk about uh, travel in a really positive light and in a really hopefully inspiring people to travel but to consider their safety yeah, absolutely. But what a wonderful way to turn something so dark into something so so pure and so bright, inspiring people. It's a wonderful thing, uh, and inspiration as well. Absolutely fantastic cause. So, Richard, medium. Yeah. What comes first, mediumship, or was you a natural medium? Um, I, I think so. I think it, it's it, it's it's been an ongoing process over the last sort of twenty years. As when my sister passed to spirit. Um, I mean, my father, Alan Stuttles, has worked at the Arthur Finlay College for many years, um, so I was surrounded by it. Ah. Uh, grandparents were in the nursing profession, mother is into healing, um, father into mediumship and spirit arts, so it was kind of a natural progression for me. Um, I think when I look back now, it was nice that I, I dived in at a few key times within my life and then allowed that information and mechanics of mediumship yeah, to process yeah. through my whole system yeah. and then move on to the next stage so the spirit art has kind of evolved after the mediumship i would say okay okay and maria hi maria she's asked how do you first develop your psychic art when did it first happen okay so um because i've always been uh, surrounded by art you you spend a lot of time by yourself as an artist. You spend a lot of time in front of a canvas, just really playing with paint. And once you can get the ego out of the way that this must look like this, this should look like this, this is what professional art is, or this is what painting is, you start to paint very loosely. You start to paint and understand the vibrational energy of color. And the best art and the best things that I've created I, from, from my point of view, are the ones that I've not really been thinking about, the ones that have come up organically, or the, the way that the colours just, you'll do something or you won't be thinking, the mind will be out of the way, and something will happen with the paint on the canvas, and afterwards you think, hang on, that works, why does that work? Yeah. Um, 
again information coming through with with that is just well why am i using what does red mean why am i using the color red why am i mixing that now with yellow with this beautiful orange i've got well it's an energy color yeah and and then with the the development of the mediumship you start to feel hang on well i'm in my space as an artist and this energy is not me this color is not for me it's not my color what and then you start to ask the questions about well hello who is this color what does this color mean how can we evolve this color um so it's really playing with color that i found helped to develop the that connection and what the colors mean you know and asking the questions well what color is sadness what color is joy what color is knowledge uh, and how that evolves so can i stop you one sec there because um this stuff is really easy for you so a lot of people will be sitting at home going well hang on so it's it's a real transition for you you flow into it you understand it and a lot of people won't necessarily understand that and the interpretation of color and why you're receiving that color how that reflects in terms of is it somebody coming from spirit are you actually picking up on somebody around you in terms of their auric fields mm -hmm. how do you determine or, or or find that um interpretation and and what practices can people do to to work with that is that just a, a natural process richard so i'm, I'm whopping now Oh, no, no, it's, it's, it's great and it's really interesting. It's incredibly interesting to me and yeah. I love talking about art and I love talking about how it mixes with the mediumship um, and, and I, I, we'll, we'll go on to some bit more in-depth stuff. But, you know, if, if you take the colour red and you're inspired to pick up the colour red and put some marks on a piece of paper, you've got four directions to go with that red. Yeah. So you've got that, what that red means to me as the medium what it means to the spirit communicator, what it means to the recipient of in their auric field, and what it means within this moment. I love that. So you've got four different interpretations from just one color. One color. Wow. Back on the on the paper, you've you've then it's down to your level of attunement or your feeling within that to say, right, what does that red mean to me? Is that right? And is that what I'm saying? Or hang on, what the spirit communicator means with red. So red is a, yeah. a, 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 a common thing that I, I say with red is if you're walking on the beach with a loved one, red means romance, it means love, it means passion, it yeah. means connection. If you're driving in the car, red means stop. So oh, okay. it's very dependent on the, the the context of where you are and it's down to your level of attunement and when we're working with spirit and we feel spirit people step in after you've said it you will know whether it's right and there's no when you're developing with spirit art if you've said something and it doesn't feel right you can change it you can say hang on a minute it doesn't feel right this feels this feels more right if i say it in this way okay okay so interesting um the spirit themselves can have their own interpretation of what that color means to them a bit like when you know you get a message from a loved one and the, the person the recipient you're giving the message to they'll give a message like um well they, they felt they didn't have much luck in life but the person might receive it and say well actually they were quite lucky Mm -hmm. so but again it's a person in the spirit world it's their opinion it is their opinion and it, and it is their interpretation of what that red means or what that color means or how they perceive themselves as you exactly as you say you know yeah. it's, it's people's perception of somebody else is very different to their perception of themselves yeah this is yeah. why what really sparked the interest in the spirit art and the drawing the portraits if you can draw a picture of somebody um, that can be matched to a photograph, then that is, is that's just that's ultimate. That's that's, that's got to be the magic moment, Richard. Oh, it's it's oh. such, it's such a gift, and and it surprises me every time. To be honest, yeah, this is clearly your passion. You have found that va va voom, that that will to be your love, and you've been so. Oh, is it luck? you probably chose your parents you probably wanted to go on this path i do believe that but so so many people don't have that background that go on to become mediums but just kind of quickly going back to what happened to your sister did that inspire you with your mediumship as well a hundred percent a hundred yeah. 
And, and I think it, that gradual process was required. I mean, we were talking about it recently. Um, I always knew at the back of my mind that this is what I would be doing. But I just needed the steps along the way to develop each part enough and allow that information to cascade through to fully understand it before you can step into actually that power and that energy to give people what they what they need or, or what's required from spirit. Um, the way that that developed for me with with the connection with my sister, because it's obviously sibling connection is incredibly strong. Yeah. Um, I knew when she walked in the room. So when she was no longer on the earth plane, I could still feel when she walked in the room. Wow. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. You can feel that energy. I mean, bless her. I could, I could feel her about now because she likes to be talked about. She loves <laughs> energy. Um, but it's so that I, I got to go back to Australia and, and very uh, sort of heartbreaking trip, but also incredibly rewarding trip. So 2003, um, I went over and did 18 months in Australia and I got to visit the places that she got to visit following in her footsteps. Yeah. And then take the journey a step further where I got to visit the places that she never made it to. Oh. So those times when you're sat on Bondi Beach or mm -hmm. you're, you're sat um, in Byron Bay and I knew, knew that that was a place that she loved, yeah. I could then sit and just talk to her and ask her questions and feel whether what I was saying resonated because you can feel that energy yeah. you feel that person step in or you something happens that you know a feather will blow by or there's a yeah. rainbow in the sky or yeah. someone will come and say a couple of key words in a sentence that it, it just resonates it just with resonates you. yeah synchronicity i mean a lot of mediums i know charlie kelly for instance the death of his sister inspired him to go on uh, and become a medium. There's so many different mediums out there that have had that experience. It is an inspiration, but absolutely, and such a powerful thing. But that brings up that emotion. And um, so, so your sister works with you in your mediumship as well. Oh, she's given me far more work now than she did when she was here. So oh. <laughs> I've had 20 years of work from her, not just oh, for charity, brilliant. but, but brilliant. now. You know, I mean, I, I I ask her for help before before every demonstration, before everything I do. I just say, Caroline, give me the support I need, and and I'll always support you. And I I I believe, I truly believe that that her presence is around. And I know she's busy in the spirit world, but yeah. um, she would always make time, as I would always make time for her. Absolutely, and there's some truth in the fact when you when you call their name, it kind of brings them closer as well. There was a lot of power in that. Uh, Lou's asked a question. Sorry, Lou, uh, I've been getting carried away. Uh, Lou has asked, I've started a spirit art group. They put a pick up to help connect, but I don't seem to bring any spirit through. I just end up drawing the pick shown. I do feel spirit with me, but unsure how to start to work with spirit to draw. Any advice greatly received? Thank you very much. Okay, so a nice technique is, is to, um, I, I presume when she, she's talking about the, the pic, it's copying a photograph or yeah. copying a picture. Yeah. So there, there's a nice, um, a nice bit where you can just get the proportions right is important. You know, most people have two eyes, they have one nose and a mouth, and it's the shape of the face um, that's important. There, there's a nice way to start where just get some energy on the paper. Don't worry about the face, put a background in the paper, just start with a couple of colours that you're inspired to pick up or close your eyes and pick up a couple of pastels and just rub it on the paper, get that energy going. And then as we were talking about earlier, feel what does that colour mean? And just ask yourself, what does that colour mean to this spirit communicator? Then start to draw, then start to put the eyes in. Well, what colour eyes did they have? What shape nose did they have? Where was it? Did they were they smiling? Were they a happy character? Did they what were the eyebrows? Did they have a, a beard? Did they have a lovely haircut? Did they wear glasses? Start to ask those questions as yeah. you're drawing. There's a lot with the, the spirit artists that it's um it's not it 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 can be very difficult to draw and to talk. 
and it can be very difficult to talk out loud but if you can get into that practice it's really beneficial because as we were saying just a moment ago you're using the voice and you're saying things about the spirit communicator which is going to bring their energy closer the spirit world sees and from my point of view sees our language as color they see it as vibrational energy of color so when you're using color and you're drawing with colors, and even if it's just a scribble or it's a couple of lines or you've drawn a circle or something, they are interpreting that as their language, as you are talking and communicating with spirit. Wow. Wow. But the principles of getting the face right, it could even be spirit working alongside with Lou to get the, the, that, the, the actual drawing right. So many people pick up a pen that can't draw yeah uh, and they'll say i can't draw a matchstick man well that's me anyway um but then they suddenly create this wonderful piece uh it was sandy ingham i believe i'm saying that right she her guide came to her when she was i think she said she turned 60 and she's just started to draw at a really high level mm. i mean that's really rare isn't it that's kind um, of a rare yeah, experience i mean you, you, you're talking about on the altered states there or um they, they talk about the glove the the ectoplasmic glove you oh, know wow it's like yeah. the hand is moving independently yeah. um, and a way that 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 evolves beautifully is if you've done some altered state work you've done some trance work it's a drawing with the opposite hand or or drawing in a way you're not thinking this is where the the talking and the linking the mind with the mediumship and the attunement with spirit but then the hand is free to do whatever you want to do and it can, the more that you do it like automatic writing, I'd put it in that category where you're distracting the conscious mind, you're attuning to the spirit world, and the hand is free then just to draw and draw freely. Wow. Hi, Cindy. Cindy's asked, what aspects of your mediumship do you connect strongly to? Do you work physically as well? Um, I, I don't, I only with or is the, that psychically? I, is that I, psychically? Have I supposed to just mispronounce that? Yeah, yes. Um, okay, so there, there is always a psychic connection with the recipient. Um, but yeah, I, it's the, the claircognience or the knowing that, that seems to um, be the strongest for me. It's just I know that this is what I'm, I'm feeling. I know that this is what I'm picking up. There's a nice way with the art as well that every stroke you make on the on the drawing means something so if you're if you're linked with the spirit world you've also got um i've had it where i've i've just done a few scribbly lines and then suddenly oh hang on that looks like a house and you've put a house in and then oh hang on it's a semi-detached house and oh there's a garden at the front and oh there's this and the drawing will just unfold and give you information that way yeah um, earlier on the clairvoyance was very strong because i would see a lot of spirit faces i would see them coming uh, coming forward um and then be able to to hopefully remember that image and draw it onto the paper but now the the process has kind of blended um where my hand or, or the, the the drawing evolves as it as it's as it on its own way and the mediumship is happening simultaneously yeah yeah i just want to quickly remind people as well can you share for us guys uh, we love to bring you this information. It's all for free, but we would ask you to support us by sharing our work. We'd really appreciate that. So can I come back to uh, color interpretation? Because it's something that I think is a really big aspect for all mediums. And, and I personally believe that, any, um, that healing, sorry, uh, color and healing also go together. Is that something, and, and or I know you're a healer, Richard, but how has that developed for you? Um, so I, I think healing underpins all mediumship, yeah. um, and I and I think every every communication that you give, um, whether that be private readings or, or demonstrations or whatever, um, the underpinning vibration is always healing. You're bringing healing to to the loved ones, whether that be on a conscious or an unconscious level, um, and the same with the art. I I feel that the colour can say a lot more than the words. So sometimes you can just use the colour yellow and people will understand what that means in multiple ways if you were going to talk about that you would have to string together well colors wisdom colors knowledge colors healing colors the sunrise yeah. yellows this yellows that and you would have to explain multiple things but if you just do a circle of yellow on a piece of paper all of that information is there yeah and um, the other aspect of that that i think is really important is 
that information can go in energetically and through the subconscious. It's not getting um, computed by the conscious mind, if that makes sense. So that's some that's things that's will go in through the conscious mind and they will have to then be processed through the body. But a lot of that information, um, the same as if you look at abstract art or if you look at anything, a lot of that information go, just goes in directly through your energetics or, or through the, the subconscious or the unconscious mind. So you will just have a feeling about it. I don't know why I like that. I don't know why I like Mark Rothko's work, but I like it. I don't know why Kadinsky's work resonates with me, but there's something about it that I just really like. And there's, there's, there's such a, a wonderful communication there with colour and with art. Um, can, can I stop you there? Kad Kadinsky was more abstract, wasn't he? Or was that yeah, through the towards the end? Yes, yeah, very much so. It was very shapely, um, very geometric, very colour led, um, very abstract art, um, and beautiful. It's actually uh, my sister's favourite artist. Um, ah, okay. Because he was, uh, am I right in saying he was popular around the turn of the last century? Yeah, he was. He was uh, and... He was really a, 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 a lead because a lot of people were into, uh, you know, art, um, drawing pictures, scenery, landscapes, and suddenly Kandinsky turns up. What is this? It's completely different. Nothing in the world, never seen anything like it before. I'm not an art buff, by the way. I just know a little bit about Kandinsky. I'm not, I don't know even sure if I can pronounce it properly, Richard, but <laughs> he is a, a, an inspiration in the work he did with colour. Mm, yeah, very much so. Very much so. I had the ability, if you look at the paintings, he put two colours together and they would just sing. They would resonate. He just knew which colours worked with which colours. You can put two colours together and they can look fantastic and really vibrate. And you can put two other colours together and they won't do anything. So he was just a, a natural, I just had that natural ability. But when you look at some of the, the past artists and certainly the ones who were pioneers of their generation, um, you can see where that inspiration is. You, you can see where they're working with spirit or where the conscious mind has come out of it um, and they're just working inspirationally. So yeah. I believe that a lot of artists, certainly the great artists, a lot of them were mediumistic, a lot of them were in tune with themselves and the energetics. Especially Van Gogh. He was supposed to have been... Um... Uh, going in and out of consciousness almost into a trance-like state which hence the swirls in the sky yeah. um he was on a lot of um medication shall we say um <laughs> you know this gentleman cut his ear off but wow what pitch his pictures just yeah anyway we've had three questions that i want to quickly go oh, back to and, and, yeah. and eva put up a question which is just saying that she started to draw a wood a woman and then it changed so it changed it into a man is that common or did she start off with her conscious mind and then spirit came in actually no you've got a man with you would it be something like that it, it could be it could very well be it could also be a couple in the spirit world um husband and wife that have both passed to spirit yeah um, oh of course that, that yeah. could be um it, it could also just be a, a gentleman that had a feminine aspect to his his character yeah now, there, there are a lot of variations, and this is where that attunement or, or that development of the mediumship to ask those questions, to say, hang on a minute, um, where where does this feel right? Where am I now? Have I got two communicators? Have I got the one communicator? Um, and, and how has that unfolded? But quite yeah. often, people, as, as you know, people come together, you know, the husband and wife that were yeah, of course. 50 years together in, in this life, um, of both past the spirit, you know, maybe it was the lady who came through first because she was a stronger personality, but then the gentleman almost wanted to, he was the, the backbone of the, the, the relationship. So just yeah. from the draw, you can tell, you can unfold a, a, a wonderful story. I also love the relationships that come in that have been together for so long, but now they're over there. They're like, no, I'm not yeah, doing my own thing now. Yes, let's start again. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. And then there was another question, Richard, on, uh, uh, I, I, oh, it's about colour. I mean, if we can find it, that would be great. But yeah, it's so interesting how, uh, in, again, interpretation of how, people come through from spirit world which is just finding that question sorry guys i try and, and try to cover all your questions as best that we can if not there's one from danielle talking about how can she develop her mediumship um I, oh do you pick the colors or do 
do you richard do spirit pick the colors for you yeah so is that uh, oh, oh 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 there is that one from chris so yeah what is your favorite color and i saw this one come up earlier and i really wanted to ask you about um well firstly what is your favorite color is there one particular uh, it's a difficult one to say isn't it and and uh, I've, I've tried to get away from blue to be honest you know when, when you look at your wardrobe and what you own as, as, a, as a gentleman I, I just loved that everything was blue I thought mm. well the, the latest Richard is gray for men Grey jackets, yeah, it's, grey it's, furniture, grey. Yeah, it's just yeah. everything. Look at my cabin. It's grey, black, white, <laughs> blue. Um, I'm I'm attracted certainly in nature. I'm attracted to green. I'm attracted to to Mother Earth. Um, and and I think so. So green, I I would say is, is my favourite colour. A nice exercise that I do quite regularly is I, I've got a few abstract paintings. Um, and when you come down in the morning, just which colour sings out to you. Yeah. And then what does that say about your mood for the day? What does that say? Where am I today? Is is it green? Is it blue? Is it red? Um, you know, and we, we do it subconsciously. So a very interesting thing, um, one with the, the workshops is I use different colored folders if I'm doing handouts. So people get to choose which color folder they want. Um, oh, okay. Whatever people turn up in, whatever they're wearing, some people choose a green scarf, a red a red jacket or whatever that may be and and it's nice to to know that people are doing that intuitively and not really consciously but then when you bring the conscious mind in to sit and say hang on a minute well why have i chosen that what do i need today or is that inspired by spirit yeah 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 and talking about the higher vibrational colors hmm. Um, can we talk about this? Because so many people have ideas around silver, around gold. In your interpretation, what would you, if you started to feel a gold vibration, what would you interpret that as? Um, so gold is healing um, for me the same. It's an extension of yellow. Um, it's, it's again, it's connection to the spirit world. So, I mean, if we look at the chakras where, where we can move up through the chakras, and I know we've got the purples and things at the top, but I would also put the white and the gold at the top. Yeah. Um, and that connection because it is the highest vibration. If you look at um, a lot of the architecture um, that, that's been built over the time and the things that, that have resonated in the connections with the spirit world, um, there's a lot of gold on the top of buildings. There's a lot of gold on pillars and things like that because it is the highest vibration. It's it's a, it's a beautiful energy that you can then work with. But it brings in, for me, the, the, the metallic elements. Um, I've got that element of white, so that purity and connection with the spirit world. But they've also got that lower resonance that then would connect with the earth and the, the, the rock of the earth, not the fauna, not mother nature, but the rock and the earth itself. So you've kind of got both ends of the spectrum in that one color, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Totally. In terms of um, angelic colors, if there's such a thing, is silver more of an angelic color? I'd say because if you if you look at the angels and traditional um, painting and when we go back to, to the art as well, then, you know, the angel wings would be silver. There's a lot of um, yeah. things in the churches and the religious aspect where you look at that, that, that silver is that color. It's it's the color of the sword. It's the color of um, of, of, the, of power. So I would say and the, the angels of power, you know, you, you look at any of the archangels or anything like that, then um, silver is a very prominent color. But it's it, because it's metallic. Again, it's 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 mixed with the, the earth and, and the metals within the earth. Yeah. By the way, just to give you a quick plug, Richard, your website is fantastic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's really good, really professional, really good uh, and really really easy to navigate so guys it is on stream as well check out richard's website uh, uh well worth a look um lou's also come back and asked richard could you please tell me about your pick behind you it looks very interesting oh. lou, you've just nicked my link i was about to do that so brilliant thank you for that well yeah i, I can of course um so just just to give we can we can talk a little bit about art so yeah um, I used to I used to paint because I, I uh, painted a lot of landscapes. So when I would first say, right, I'm going to do I'm going to do some serious painting. I went out because I love to be out in nature. So I would stand at a location uh, and plain air It's called plain air painting or painting outside. So I would stand and do watercolors or, or, or quick drying oils on location and then paint a lot of landscapes. 
Um, I then went into sports paintings because I did a lot of skateboarding and snowboarding and into extreme sports uh, when my body was still a bit more willing than it is now. Um, so, so I was really, I really like that movement and that movement yeah, of yeah. energy um, yeah. and the, the, the kinetics around that. Yeah. And then now the, the, the inspiration has come from more what we don't see. You know, it's it's everybody. You you learn to draw. So I learned to draw perspective. I learned to draw buildings. I learned to draw the proportions of the face. I learned the the the, the tools of the trade, the same as you would learn the mechanics of mediumship. Yeah, it's the same thing. So so I'm a, I'm a great believer in a, a good foundation for that. You know, you can't draw abstract until you can draw um, a decent structure. You know. You need to understand perspective. You need to understand architecture before you can go abstract. So I, I spent a lot of time doing that. Um, I can show you a quick one here that, that is more um, of a traditional painting. Yes. So this was painted in Antibes. So I painted this on the spot and then finished it in the studio. But it's very much, there are elements of abstraction in it, but it's very much a traditional landscape. People can recognise it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, we we come forward to, to to sort of the more work that I'm doing now. Um, and this was a, a journey through meditation. So there, there's a, an image of somebody sat cross-legged meditating. Um, and then there's the connection with nature and the colours, the waterfall. The spirit communicators or people in spirit that would be popping in or coming into that meditation that would be around in the... Um, in the auric field or they would be put um, sending information then you've also got the energetics of it's difficult to understand what the world really is if that makes sense sometimes it's it's the it's the energetics around that so not painting physically what we see but more what we feel so this painting evolved from um someone sat meditating and then evolved over time to to add different layers to go oh no well there, there seems to be a connection with nature and there's a trinity of nature then there's a mountain in the background there's a waterfall there's a, a bit of a fiery sky there's some faces about um and then some energetic rings or that connection that attunement where we can attune with different levels and different vibrations so yeah. it's it's a it's an interesting piece. <laughs> it is, it is. And how long have you been working on that? Um, I, well, I finished it a while ago, but it's um, some of the paintings evolve very quickly. Um, I did, I did come a couple recently. That, that a couple of days. If I'm doing portraits, yeah. um, then it'd probably be a few weeks, uh, and I'd be on and off. This one had been on and off for for probably a few months. Okay. And you can put it away. And then you go, oh, well, I'll have a re-look at that, you know, or I'll turn it upside down and see what I see, or I'll turn it the other way. Um, so things like this type of work evolve more organically over time than I've got an idea in my head and this is what I want to portray on a canvas. Yeah. It's a very yeah. different way of working. And that's what I've explored um, certainly in the last few years, but on and off over the years. It's When I first started painting, it would be, I want a true representation of what I see. Yeah. And now it's more, um, I don't know what the end product's going to be, but I feel at this time, these are the colors I'm feeling and this is what I'm putting on the, 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 the canvas. This is the paint I'm using. Now I put that away and I put it back out a week or so later and I say, well, hang on, where, where are we now? Where is this journey? Where are we? At? Uh, at this part of the journey what is what is this person where are they going in their meditation what are they connecting with so just from yeah. that one idea but it, it ideas sometimes they take a long time to process through the conscious mind um to then become more of a feeling and emotion that you can then let yourself go on the canvas you know if that makes sense meditation is more abstract with concrete <laughs> ideas you it's know it's exactly that. And, and art is such a great way to a meditation. I mean, I'm a terrible, terrible meditator. I can't stay still for five minutes. I'm terrible. You know, a walk on the beach is my meditation or sitting in front of a, a, a blank canvas yeah. and, and just playing with colour is, is such a, a wonderful meditation. It just distracts the conscious mind 
allows the hand to flow freely, um, and then you find yourself going into into a beautiful meditation. But as so, it, it's still terrible. Yeah, no, I know that feeling. But Zoe has asked a question. Uh, so were you self-taught or taught by someone? Because I know you said your father is an artist. And his father is an artist, yeah. So, I mean, I've been very privileged that i've i've got to to work with him and we we work in the studio together so he's oh all- wow but it's it's Can I- I, i've lived away for a long time so um the time when we get to paint and be together is really special time oh, that's beautiful because father and sons don't always see eye to eye no no well we're, we're <laughs> very lucky we're, we're very tolerant of each other no, that's brilliant i'm joking we, we get yeah. on we get on really well we we've got terrible senses of humor so uh we get on really really well yeah. um, but it's it's uh, you, i think you realize when life comes uh, and you you get on with life and what you're doing and and the work um that the years pass by so it's yeah. it's really important and it's really precious time um so i really value that time now and i'm i'm very lucky that i've realized that um now to be honest uh, hi, Danielle. Well, she's asked, Danielle, she, she's asked, uh, inspired, it's, is it possible to teach myself to draw or do you have to be naturally gifted? No, you, you can. It's, it's a skill to be learned, drawing. Um, it, it's, there's a, so, so with some artists, um, there's just, they've just got a touch. Um, you look at any of the great artists, you look at Rembrandt, you look at Turner, you look at yeah. any anyone like that they just had that touch you cannot teach that but they are in genius they're in the top one percent they're genius yeah the rest of it is i would say a lot like mediumship you you learn the mechanics you learn how to draw you learn perspective you do life drawing you learn um you build up a repertoire so if you're doing life drawing you you first you look at the shape you look at the tonal values you look at the structure you look at the points where the person's leaning then you start to build up a repertoire of how to how to draw um so it's certainly a skill that is learned um but a natural gift if you're lucky enough to have it there will be something within the arts that you are naturally gifted you might have a gift for color You might have a gift for perspective. You might have a gift um, for the tonal values. You know, there will be something that is really easy for you um, as as an artist or or developing your art. But the discipline is to work on the bits that you aren't very good at, you know. And the, the portraiture is, for me, certainly the most difficult of all disciplines, of all art, because millimeters make a difference. If you're one mil out or two mil out with the, the the shape of the eye, the way that the nose looks, the cheekbones, it looks nothing like the either the spirit communicator or the person that you're drawing. Do, uh, do they actually say to you, uh, Richard, uh, my nose is a bit smaller than that? <laughs> Some of them have said, they've said you're, you're, you're a terrible artist because you've got my proportions completely wrong. <laughs> I get told that. Um, there's an interesting thing it's with with art and working with with spirit art is um, a lot of the the spirit communicators uh, are like we are when we're here so if you're getting your portrait done here you want your best side you want yeah. to be looking, looking sharp you know yeah, you absolutely want to be yeah. really good um, and it's the same in spirit so I have spirit communicators that come through and they bring themselves through younger than when they passed and the, the 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 intelligence of spirit is is unbelievable but yeah. what what sometimes happens with that is then they will be matched to a photograph that the family have on the sideboard yeah. you know which is just mind blowing so they brought themselves through in the same scene that the family remember them or they're in their prime time um another thing i talk about is uh, we're looking for a speaking likeness of people so when people are posing, you see the facade and they're aware of how they look. As soon as they start talking and communicating, they forget about what they look like and they're giving you their energy. So what we've got to work on when we're working with spirit is we've got their energy first and then we're working with how they actually looked. Yeah. But that's the, the difference when you're linking in with um, the mediumship and the spirit art is the mediumship will tell you, oh, hang on, yeah, my nose is like this, I look a little bit like that, 
And by the way, I, I had a moustache, but you haven't put that in yet. Oh, OK, yeah, I'll put that in. <laughs> then some of it is, is organic in, in the way that it just comes and you'll paint or draw some lines that just work and you don't have to touch them. And that's not my hand. That's the, yeah. I believe that's the hand of spirit. You sign to know the difference between what is you and what isn't you. I want to ask you, and, and I'm going to come to Anne's question, uh, about interpretation for all of us with art and how we get into the mind of the artist, the painter. And, and I think that's really important. And I say that because especially for people that are developing mediumship mm -hmm. and, and connecting whether the, the artist is here or not. But there is something special about it. Sorry, I'm, I'm going on. Let's get to Anne's question. Oh, when no. I paint, when oh, I paint my landscapes in oils or pastels, I have faces, animals, elementals or angelic beings appear, but I haven't painted them deliberately. Has this happened with you? I've done courses with Alan at the Upper Finney College. Yes, most certainly, most certainly happens um, frequently, to be honest. In, 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 in this picture, though, I, I put faces in, but the faces started off with a blur or a smudge that I have then turned into a face. Yeah. So in, within this, this area here, I remember painting it and it was very much a bit of palette knife work and a, a few scrapes. And then suddenly you go, oh, hang on, my, there's a face there. And you can pick out the, the details. Yeah. The same with working with your hand and just not even looking at the paper, just scribbling on the paper. And then you would look and you would see a face come out. And then that oh, a spirit wow. communicator stepping in. So, yeah, most certainly. You look at any of the great artists, and I know we mentioned Turner, but you look at Turner's work, there are faces all throughout his landscapes. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, Van Gogh has that... Uh, with Pete, I'm assuming it's Van Gogh because there's these tiny little men like the Harvest, mm -hmm. the Van Gogh exhibition, and I don't know why, but for me as a medium, I found I don't know, connected with art so powerful. Mm. In that moment, it kind of connects you with Van Gogh, which is quite a not an out of body experience, but quite an unusual experience to kind of have that experience with with Van Gogh experiencing I'm trying to, to find the right words I felt when I saw the harvest and the reason why I say that and I'm I don't care what people think I got emotional with the harvest which is quite strange beautiful summer's day all everyone's working I think it was around 1896 if I'm right and, and it, it could be East Anglia it could be Holland it could be anywhere I believe he's more based in Holland wasn't he or North France towards the end of his life I can't remember but again, I had the same experience in the Rijksmuseum with, and I can't remember the artist. It was a, a maid in a crossing a Paris bridge and uh, Victorian, uh, around the Victorian times. And she was just so lost. You can, you can see the emotion on her face. And he captured that emotion. And it's so powerful. Now, I have no art experience or background into art, but it's something I've developed or I've found I've developed with my mediumship that I've become more open to this. So I would encourage people to, to go out and experience more art. But how can we connect more? Is, there, is it just a natural thing, Richard? What, what would you suggest? So, well, a lot of people, and certainly this was the case for me, is, you know, you look at abstract art. I didn't understand abstract art. Yeah. I, I just thought, it, it's, I don't get it. I yeah. don't, I can't. I can't make sense of it. Even you, you look at Picasso and people like that in the, the yeah. Cuban movement. Yeah. I, I don't really understand why. Why are people so <laughs> attracted to this? Yeah, I got stuff that you're thinking. Hang on a minute. Well, I can see it. It's a painting. I can see it. it's almost naive art. Yeah, but the stroke of genius within it. Um. So this is where where you were saying, Paul, about getting into the mindset of the artist. And what a great way! Um, I, I would I would liken it to to someone giving you a ring of the loved one that's passed a spirit. Yeah, and connecting with that. Yeah, You're connecting through not just a moment of that artist's life, but the months and months yeah. and lifetime of experience that it took yeah. them to paint that picture. And though the the pictures certainly from any of the great artists would have been months in creation, so they've gone backwards and forwards. 
And the, 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 the times that they just captured that moment might be one session or two sessions where there's a, a brush stroke here or a flick yeah. there that just adds something so special. Yeah. They wouldn't necessarily be aware of that. And the, the rest of the painting would be the mechanical aspects of this is how I'm painting a picture. These yeah. are the skills I've learned. But then there's a moment of genius where they have connected to whoever in the spirit world or whoever within their, their own yeah. energetics and their own their own truth, their own power. And they, they've just managed to be in that moment at that time to put those few strokes on that have just made it from a great picture to something genius. But we are so privileged to be able to connect with these paintings. So for me, it's it's certainly spending time just sat looking at it and looking yeah. at each element of the picture, not just, oh, this is, you know, I'm just looking at this as a beautiful landscape. Well, what's round the corner? What's behind yeah. the tree? Yeah. What's under the rock? What's the, what, what's, what are they trying to say? What's the artist trying to say? It's showing you the world from his point of view or her point of view. But it's that moment you, 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 you feel their emotion. Mm. And, and, and like I say, twice it's happened to me. And, and it's such a powerful moment to have that experience. And there's so much art out there. It's certainly worth exploring, especially, I mean, is it Natural Portrait Gallery? National yeah, portrait. yeah, National Portrait, yeah. In the Trafal and Trafalgar Square. Yeah. Um, going along and seeing Henry VIII. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of the first. Well, we all, we all know their characters. We've, you know, so many of us have learned through history, their power, their dominance in difficult times. But connecting with the art and that person, because it was as good as a photo of his day. Mm. Yeah, well, well, it was. They, they were photographs of the day. And this is where people like Rembrandt are, are just absolute genius because they, they managed to capture all of these, this essence of the person and to bring forward who that person really was just with the, the way that they're looking or the way that they're, they're, they're looking at, out at the canvas or they're looking mm -hmm. off in, in, some, in, in some distant thought or, you know, the, the, the jewels or the, the, the clothing that they're, they're wearing is, is so relevant and has such meaning. Um, so they, they were, they, they were the, the, the photographers of the day. And you've got to remember with all of that that they needed live sitters. So it wasn't like you can take a photograph and come back and work on it in the studio or copy it or anything like that. Yeah. They, they had to do it. You look in the National Gallery and uh, Stubbs's work, who, who did a lot with the horses, there's a huge painting of Stubbs and it's a huge stallion and he's rearing up. But the stallion wouldn't pose for that. No, not a chance. <laughs> no, no. So this, this guy had to, had to go, go backwards and forwards and study and draw and draw in this, get the muscle tone, get this, that. And it was just the same with the, the portraiture. Um, and it's just absolute genius. Yeah, you, you can't imagine. Yeah, I imagine Henry VIII walking in and going, well, you've got 20 minutes. Yeah, well, yeah. You'd, have, you'd have someone who's who sat in dress the same with the same you know who would uh, be doing all the, the and then you just he would come back in uh, and do the face you know and, and it's, it's it's just you know you imagine that back then as well certain colors were um so the blues there's a lot of blues there's a lot of purples and a lot of reds because the pigment was expensive so if you wanted to portray opulence you would use these specific colours because they were hard to get hold of. They weren't available to every artist. They were only available to the top tier. So these things have meaning as well because it, it meant that you were powerful if you were. So if you see anyone in a fault with a lot of blue and a lot of purple on the, the robes, you knew that that person had had money because they, they were expensive pigments. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Divine has asked a question. Oh, we're going to have a break. Rich has asked us for a quick break. So, guys, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this break. MySpiritualDirectory.com is the one of the fastest growing online free listing service. 
Our search directory offers geolocation feature, rating ability, review system, map location, customer comment, YouTube video, gallery, social media sharing, direct contact with the lister, simple online booking and payment system. It's free to register and use, it even creates your own mini web page, which you can update at any time, and yes, it's still free, no monthly or yearly fees. 100% free. Creates your own profile page. Add social media and other links. Add a mini gallery and a YouTube video. Rating, reviews and comments. Includes online booking and payments. So, if you're looking for a medium, or a reader, even a church, maybe a healer, or any other spiritual service, then visit myspiritualdirectory.com. Tonight from 8pm, Bill Hughes and his guest will be demonstrating their mediumship abilities with free readings to our viewers. Hi everyone and welcome back here to SPTV with Spiritual Talk with my wonderful guest Richard Stuttle. Hi Richard and welcome back. Um, guys, just before we go into the questions again, um, it's Bill's last show tonight so stay tuned. It's on uh, pretty much right after us at 8 o'clock and it's, oh god, you know what, honestly, it's just gone straight out of my head again. Sorry Richard. Collective Consciousness. Oh, I think it's just... Uh, getting old Richard that's what it is I'm getting old anyway moving on uh, it's quite exciting because Richard has also agreed to do a little bit of work here tonight people would like to see you work Richard is that possible of, of course well it, it's it's down to the spirit world but um, if I roll awesome. sleep, don't they normally step in oh awesome awesome so I like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> While you're doing that and tuning, um, Divine has asked a question. Is it normal to be the only one to see an angel or spirit sign in a, in the painting? Uh, I've been in museums, she says, and stuff, and I'll be pointing uh, something out to people, and they don't see it. Well, they'll see their own things, you know, and, and I think it's 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 down to, to your perception and, and where you are on your journey. So, yeah very much it's what's relevant and what's coming up within you so if you're if you're working with with um with any type of, of spirit sign or any a, angel or anything like that you would generally feel them about or you would feel that presence because that's what you're interested in that's the part of the journey that you're on they might just be on a different journey or a different part of that journey awesome awesome so we're going to see uh if spirit are going to come in and we'll see what happens richard and and watching your technique as well i'm really excited to watch your technique and see so, what... can, you, can you see the easel yeah perfectly I, I don't know about you richard but i can see it it's right in the middle of the screen perfect um, so, so i i generally i have i have absolutely no idea how i'm going to work or, or what's going to happen um, so we just get a bit of colour, we get a bit of energy on the paper um, and we just start to bring in, and it's what colour have I picked? A lovely orange. So as we work with this orange, I know that there's someone, there's someone coming in on this orange and they feel like they're a very energetic person. I'm wanting to smile um, as, as I talk with this person and as I see, as I feel them and I, oh, they're looking down slightly. They're looking. They're looking a little bit. Yeah, this is the nice person coming. In. So we can see as we've started to work with this, it will be somebody here, um, and someone might recognise this drawing and might recognise this person as they as they step forward. And if you do, please please speak up. Um, and again, Paul, if you if you're if you're picking up anything about this this spirit communicator, then please step in. But I Absolutely. just that that we've got we've got a, a gentleman stepping forward here who is watching over you and it feels like that there's someone just watching working down and watching over you would have felt their presence re recently and i know that this gentleman is, is talking um about life and about the, the times he was when he was here and he's talking about it with such energy with such vibrancy and he comes through in a very simple man and he's a very simple simple morals to this gentleman I know that he's talking about this he's showing himself younger than when he passed um, as, a, as a lot of spirit communicators do but he's showing me the energy of the youth and he's talking about um, 
getting the details right. He's a, he was a man for detail. And as I work with him, I know as well that, that he, he, had, he, had, he had lovely brown eyes. And his eyes were important. There would be a, a, a glistening in his eye, this gentleman. And as I want to put in a bit of detail with him, I want to, to work with him. The eyes he's talking about are the window to the soul. And they're such a wonderful thing to, to, to get in touch with and to, to, to bring forward. He's making himself known to somebody here this evening. Um, and he's wanting to talk about the work that's been completed. So I know that there's somebody here who's just been working with this gentleman, aware of them in the spirit world, and has just completed a project. I'm feeling that this gentleman has been with them and has been watching them and they would be aware of his presence and they would be aware of how he um, how he passed to spirit as well. He's saying that uh, he was saying thank you for the times that they spent with him towards the end of his life. And there was some reminiscing about the early times and the early days. I know as well with this gentleman that he would have he would have enjoyed outside. There would be memories outside and flowers as well are relevant with this gentleman. So I know that he would have been a keen gardener. I know that there would have been flowers that would have been um, brought to him because he really enjoyed flowers. He's talking to me about casual dress as well. So I believe that he would have liked to be dressed casual. He would have had a nice, a nice way about him, a casual way about him. This, this was really important. Does anyone recognize this gentleman? Mm, I... Your brother. Oh, superb, Richard. So oh. Richard has just said... Oh, that's awesome. So for those of you guys at home that can't hear, Richard just has taken this as, as his brother. Uh, and this is exactly how he looked like as a boy. Um, Richard's actually got a photograph. Could you share it, Richard? Is there any way you could share it with the audience? Oh, oh no, no, you can't. No, so it's fine. Yeah, I was hoping to get some the flickers. Ah, uh, of course. Ah, oh, wonderful. When Richard is saying he's got the, the, the shirt that Richard is drawing, our Richard is saying uh, it's an identical shirt. And also the flick with his hair is, is the opposite, obviously, because of the picture, but that's also him. That's wonderful. So, so this is a nice example. I don't know if, if the people watching can hear, or hear you, Richard, but... It's um, obviously Paul and I can, but there's a lot of information that can be said through with just the drawing. Yes. You know, I wouldn't have to say anything. And it started with the colour orange. So I have no idea who was, who was stepping in. So, so uh, Richard just said there is a shirt of his brother, wear, uh, an orange shirt that he's wearing on the picture. So, yeah. So, so this is this is an interesting an interesting link as well. So we're we're talking and we're working with this, and he's obviously a very good communicator. So Richard, you would know that there's something that's been that can be completed recently. And then, yeah. 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 Oh, wow. It's amazing, isn't it? So we, we find the tools that are really relevant to us um, and that what we can work with. So I know that this gentleman would have been quite creative as well. And I get the sense that he's watching over you. I'm wanting to, to, to play with his eyes. I'm putting a little glint in his eyes because the eyes, again, are, are really important. And I, I feel it, it's not about me wanting to make this painting or this drawing look anything other than it should be yeah it's not me now looking at it and going oh these proportions are slightly wrong or this this needs to come up here or this needs to come. it's not about that it's about the energy that's coming off that picture it's about the way that he's looking it's about the way that the, the, the shadows are coming in why have i got this orange in my hand well the orange is energy the orange is about vibrancy i know that this gentleman as well would have liked the sunsets because he's talking about and he's showing me a picture of a sunset and i know that there would be times and memories and as i say that i feel him stepping in strongly there would be memories with you richard and with this gentleman watching the sunsets and richard has said yes 
So I'm wanting, I'm wanting to bring in, so whatever colour, I mean, I will just move, put my hand over this and we'll use this as a bit of a demonstration. So whatever colour I've got here, um, which is an Indian red, oh, which is a beautiful colour, it's a really rich red as well. Yeah. Um, so I know that we can then start to bring in some of this red. And this is talking about the highlights of the face and the highlights within the art. So I know that art would have been important in this gentleman's life. And, and I know that it would have been it would have been, been important for him to look presentable mm. as well, casual but pre presentable. Yeah, are you okay, Richard? Yeah, R Richard's pretty stunned, um, everybody. What a one! And the way you created from the beginning, Richard, as well, was fantastic with the, just getting the energy on the page. So, so it's it's just about you know bringing that energy through, and and we could have quite quite simply just gone with the orange, and just gone yeah. with that, and and the reading could have evolved from that. The the communicator would have stepped in with that vibration. Yeah. And I can just say to Richard, the color orange, and I wouldn't need to say any more. But we have unfolded it for him. But it's the colour that there was a starting point, and the colour that is bringing that love and that energy energetically without me saying a word that's coming directly from spirit and it's bringing forward the passion for life it's bringing forward the memory of the sunset it's bringing forward the energy that richard's got as he's working and the the work that that this gentleman is overseeing because the angle of the face is showing him that he's overseeing the work and looking down with a cheeky smile as well so i know that he would have had a cheeky smile and i know that he would have been very proud of what richard has achieved well, I've really enjoyed myself watching you work, Richard. That was just brilliant. <laughs> I've just put my feet up and could unfold it. We we could carry on. We could create a lovely in the background. We could put some other people in. Yeah, sure. And and quite nice. Say again, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Richard. So Richard just uh, disclosed that he was found just after sunset. Yeah. Oh, the emotion of that then, that, that then goes on from there, Richard. Um, and as an artist, if, if, if your recipient then goes on and says that, that's so powerful, isn't it? Well, it's, it's, it's so important. And it, it, to me, it says the importance of this work. Yeah. So, so the orange is, again, you know, it's bringing through the memory and the trauma that, that what yes. Richard's experienced, but it's bringing it through in a way where we can deliver healing yeah and so the orange is is transmuting not just through through me as the medium but through the artwork itself um, and i'm wanting to give him purple as well i'm wanting to bring that in and so what's happening we can start to explore these different colors so if i bring in a bit of green and a bit of a bit of nature in with that that orange we can start to organically change that healing change that frequency of healing so it can be better received by richard or it can cascade through more of his body bringing that healing throughout you know yeah. really important yeah and debbie's put tearful absolutely debbie because there's the process of healing within that for richard and this is where art is so great and the way that you were talking about before paul where people can connect with with any piece of art yeah. and great artists so although the, the, the message and the, the, the communicator is certainly for Richard, it's also, um, there'll, there'll be elements here that other people will be able to resonate with and they'll go, oh no, I, I loved Orange for this. And they're getting something from this communicator and from this communication, the same as when we're, we're doing mediumship in, in churches or, or in venues, that everybody can take something from from each communication you're including the whole audience and the same as that works exactly the same here this has only happened not just because you're here paul and richard's uh, the recipient here but because everybody else who's linking in with this is bringing that energy in order for the spirit communicator to step forward if yeah. one person wasn't here it wouldn't have happened in this way yeah but that's why it's such a privilege yeah yeah his name was Paul. Oh. Um, See, so so unconsciously I've said Paul and his name was Paul. And, and so that's the way that the art can unfold as well. Yeah. 
you'll say things and say, hang on a minute. Um, if we were delving in and we were doing it in a demonstration purposes, we've, rec we've put the drawing in. We'd also bring forward the evidence to really say, well, this is your brother. This is where it is. Um, and then what's the message? Well, the message is about healing, but this is also the message is about that communication and about that completion and that satisfaction that you should feel at the end of the year where you, your new growth, I'm wanting to come back to the green and bringing this green in for the new growth for 2024 and how that sits with you now. So you planted the seeds this year for something to grow and really go for next year. Yeah, Richard, you have, yeah. Yeah, it's exciting times at SPTV. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, honestly, I just sat back and put my feet up. And you, not only did you, I mean, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to link, Richard. I have to say, I'm so sorry, but I was really into your flow, your connection. I just felt like I would, yeah. Could we do one more? Is it possible we could try one more? I was sitting down and everyone's like, oh, yes, please. I'm so sorry, Richard, put you on the spot. No, that, that you, look, it's an absolute. Oh, Richard just said everybody that he hasn't come through, Paul hasn't been through for a very long time. So that's a, a wonderful message for Richard. And probably also reflective of all your hard work, hard work, Richard, that you're doing on SPTV. That's great. And this is a bit I love, Richard. How you start like this, bringing well, that energy and the colour. We'll start differently, you know. We, you can, okay. This is this is really interesting. How um, some drawings will be in a style of art that the spirit communicator likes. Ah, okay. That's interesting, isn't it? They're, yeah. They're, this looks a bit, and then oh, hang on. Well, they did like Picasso. Well, they did like Rembrandt. They did like, you know, which is yeah. is interesting, isn't it? Um, but and then some come through a bit more, you know, the the the, the photorealistic stuff. Um, or the, the, the hyper realism stuff or, or the, the you know the, the stuff that comes through a bit more scratchy and a little bit more oh yeah. there's a lady here yes. uh, and, I, and I know that this lady is a, is a wonderful lady she feels yeah. uh, like she's such a vivacious is the word I'm getting for this lady uh, yeah. <laughs> she's, she came in the same time with Paul so you've got this. Oh well, we'll give a give a we'll do a little double a double link then then Paul. Well, the hair you're getting the hair exactly how I saw the hair in my head. There was that wave and curl to it, but there is a, a real uh, dignity to this. Like, I know she's a mum as well because she was telling me that she's a mum. It was a really important role for her being mum as well. So I was worried though when you started to draw Paul for Richard. That they came in together, so that's why I went quiet. Ah, okay. Ah, Richard just said they usually come in together, so this could be another one for Richard. This could be, but you'd understand her being very um, motherly, Richard. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Certainly, people can't hear this, so that's just so such a shame, Richard, that people can't hear you. Oh, no, it's okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah, because it could be. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it could still be for someone else. Okay. It, it, it feels like we might have to throw this one out, to be honest. I mean, not throw, throw it out to the... the, 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 the audience. Uh, yeah. No, don't throw it away, bless her. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I know as I say that to her as well, she... she, she was... <laughs> <laughs> don't you dare throw me away exactly. she's telling me off she's telling me off um, so I know that terminology was important to this lady and I know that English language was important to this lady as well so I know I feel that she was very educated and I feel that she would have talked to you um, about the language and about that and she's bringing in poetry as well I don't know if you're feeling that as well Paul but I'm just... not I was about to ask uh, answer Chris's message watch this space Watch your space, Chrissy. Watch your space, okay? Um, so, so we've got. Um, she's she's a very. She's talking about poetry, and she's talking about reading prose as well. So I know that there there's a lot of interest with this lady of how she how she evolved as a person herself, but also the education 
um, that she passed on to 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 other people um, when in her lifetime. So it feels like that there's reading stories. It feels like that there's reading poetry. Um, I'm taken to the Bronte sisters as well. So there's a link there. There, there there's something around the um, some of the great epics that she used to read and she used to bring in. Um, so I know that she was an avid reader. This lady. Um, she does a, as Paul was saying. She feels like she's a mother grandmother figure. Um, and I hate that terminology and I use yeah. it. Um, <laughs> but it, yeah. feels, it feels like we're, Very we're, lovely. we'll get a, a sort yeah. of um, see, I keep hearing, see, this is the thing, I've had this before when I've worked with an artist, Richard, and I was told off because I'm also aware of what she's wearing uh, and her jewellery. Well, strangely, I'm just putting a necklace on her now. Yeah, I saw, I saw like a pearl necklace on her. Yeah. So, uh, and they would, they would only come out for, for, you know, for occasions like today. Yeah, it feels like that this lady had, um, she, she, she had dresses for best. She had dresses the best um, also also i'm aware of christian values with her as well very much so she she is a very um she if something was wrong she would tell you she would <laughs> tell you in no uncertain terms um i'm just wanting to 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 blend in this drawing a little bit with her um because again, it feels quite scratchy. So I know that she would have been organized in, in, in the way that she was, but her mind feels like it was going towards the end. So I know that I'm with a lady who, yes. towards the end of her life, she's bring, she's bringing the drawing a little bit scratchy um, and, a, and a little bit all over the shop. So someone would have a memory here with this lady and they would have um, been with her towards the end and the mind would have been going. Does anybody recognize this lady? Yeah, let us know guys if you reckon. She looks like the queen. That's a nice one, Chrissy. Potentially, she has that kind of aspect to it. She's well presented. She has that air of grace about her. She, she's, she, she's a beautiful lady, um, and she, she was very. She's a very colourful lady as well. Vivacious was the word I started with, um, and it feels that, that 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 was really relevant to her, and it feels like that that she's a, a little bit more full of face towards the end of her life, but she was very active in, in her earlier life. And she starts to, to come through with a real positivity. So I know that, that she would have, again, she's taking me out to nature, but she would have been very positive towards the natural world um, and a positivity in life as well. I've got red cardigans with this lady as well. Does anyone recognize a red cardigan with this lady? Yeah, I'm also uh, getting a name as well that connects to her. Could be mum. Uh, Helen's put could be mum. Do you understand this information then, Helen? Uh, Carrie Ann's put yes, my grandma. Right, well, where, where do we feel we are, Paul? Can I, can I use colour? Can I play along with, you, with uh, this? Please do. do. Mind? So I'm, I'm sensing a really strong blue with her, but I'm sensing... Uh, that there potentially could be a caring side, potentially a, a caring or a nurse or nursing side to her. So yeah. there's, there's a real sense of that. And, and a real strong sense of this mumsy, real mumsy feel when you was in her, uh, her company. Um, Helen's put my mum past with Alzheimer's in January. It feels it, it does feel like she's she's the, the mind is all over the shop. The mind is yeah. Um, and again, I'm wanting to put in in the pearl necklace. And again, the drawing is is very different. It feels like she's got a fuller face towards the end as well. But the drawing. Ah, is okay. We're with we're with Helen. Uh, can take a lot of information. My mom was a nurse. It feels it feels if we're if we're there then then that's great. Let's see if we can unfold it a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Would you understand, Helen, that, that mum could be a little bit predict unpredictable, she was saying at times. And and you found that difficult. Um oh, it's, but she just comes in with so much love. 
She's wanting, she was a talker as well. So she's saying that the communication was really important. And there were things, this is where she's talking about before she passed to spirit, that I know that there were things that were unsaid and there were things that she, you didn't know whether she understood. Um, and this is said through, through the art and the drawings as well. There would be drawings as well that are passed down. And there would be artwork that you've now got from your mother. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a, it's a beautiful way that the, the, the artwork can just unfold. See, when I connect to your colours, Richard, I'm very much aware with the green as well that she would be an outdoors person as well, would love to get outside, would love to have that experience to get amongst in amongst nature, would want to almost a fill of green fingers as well with her. Well, this is interesting because I've just put the yellow on the oh. blue, which is then made green. So as you were talking is where the colours are actually working and really bringing in something that's a, a little bit special because the colours can convey that as well, which is yeah. really nice, isn't it? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. I love I love working with colour. Helen's put, I have lots of her pearl necklaces. Now I cared for her mu for mum at the end. And yes, she was a talker. Well, see how I've just, I'm just, as you said that, I'm drawing in the pearl necklaces. And it's so it's, it's just such a, a beautiful way that we can bring through the communication yeah, yeah absolutely bring through some of that that information and i again i'm wanting to just keep it really loose can so i please sorry sorry richard sorry uh, i'm also very much aware of a, a red with her in terms of her power and determination and strong-mindedness there was this real earthy quality with her it does as you say that paul i feel that this is the pillar of the power with her yeah. this is underpinning vibration i'm almost also taken to poppies and remembrance because this to me is is almost the shape of a pop. Uh, yeah i know yeah. um that we we've got a link there with the war and people who, who she was cared for but you're 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 i i feel the same with the red that it was the pillar of the power and a very caring loving lady um, but again, a very strong and powerful lady. I wonder if that was to do with the name Thomas or the, the poppy, because I, I heard Thomas originally. The Tom or the Thomas. Yeah, yeah, I hope. Oh, that's such a great picture. So it's interesting how we can just keep things really loose and mess about with, with the art. And, uh, you know, it, it's not the hand that's that's doing the work. It's it's hopefully um, to, to free yourself up and not think I've got to change this, I've got to do this, the drawing needs to look like that. You know, unless the spirit communicator, um, which this lady is saying, is just get a few of the lines right, please. Um, yes. <laughs> right away. Yeah. We can start to go in and really, uh, really start to resonate with this drawing. But I feel this is when we were talking about the abstract and the abstract parts of this, this, uh, this, understanding art and understanding creativity and this is where that this lady with the alzheimer's that she the, the conscious mind would have started to go and this is where that i feel the message is for everybody here where we're talking about the conscious mind but we're talking about feeling and the emotions because the emotions are the last to go yeah the conscious mind can leave but we can still feel the love and the emotion so as we're talking about art and we're talking about this connection with art and the abstract art, then it's about the feeling. It's not about the conscious mind. And I feel that that's the same with the mediumship is when we talk about mediumship, it's about moving the conscious mind out of the way in order for us to just talk, to be yeah. honest, to be authentic, to feel that blend and that play with the spirit world because they just love to play as much as we do. And why wouldn't you? You know? Yeah, yeah. Richard, that was brilliant. Thank you so much for demonstrating that. I, I, I mean, I could piddle away on there for, for, for hours and just yeah. play. And the, the, the drawing would evolve the same as, as the other the other work evolves. But yeah. it's, you know, we've we've got a, we've got an interesting drawing and, a, and an unfoldment. The beauty of the art and the beauty of that is something that can um, people can link back in with. So the, the same as we were working with Richard earlier you can link back in with that orange you know and it's, it, it's interesting as well Richard sorry to talk over you but I just put two comments on it one of them was uh, there was elements in this as well that sounded like dad but you'll find that especially if both mum and dad are in spirit they're all coming together with, with that shared love 
Um, and she says also that the picture is very much of mum in her younger days, which again reflects what you were saying earlier. And also, um, she was very strong minded. Ah, oh, I've just, I just, yeah. So, yeah, dad was an English teacher and loved gardening, just amazing. But there's another comment which had just popped up on there. Can you see that? That the latest one. There you go. It looks like mum. Then there's one after that. And there was a, yeah, that. It looks like mum uh, when she was younger, and she's put just incredible. There was another one, but I missed it. I was too slow. We get so many comments coming in so quick, but it's been. Oh, I'm up. Oh, Christine Davis as well can take this, and that's also another interesting aspect of, like you said earlier, about everyone can take something from a message. Mm-hmm. It's it's important, and and I think you know if we're if we're working in more of a demonstration, you would narrow it down. But yeah. there, there certainly would be elements with the poppy, elements with with the gardening, elements with the colours that everybody could take. You know what yeah. would be nice if we can we can give the drawing um, its its own recognition and the spirit communicator. The face would look like one in particular person, but everybody would get something from the colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Janice put it so amazing. Nice to see the outward unfolding picture on what is going on. Absolutely. It's been an absolute privilege, Richard. But before we go, we've only got a few minutes left. I just wanted to ask you, what's next? Ah, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm working. <laughs> um, so so next year is looking great. Um, just, you know, my, my role now is, is just to be of service as much as possible. So um demonstrations uh readings workshops just just to really serve spirit as much as i can and the opportunities i'm i'm incredibly privileged to 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 have the opportunities coming up and yeah i'm really looking forward to it so that's going to be good fun but check out the website if you if you want to yeah if you guys can just see the link below um check on um, richard's website it's a great website and, and really informative and richard just wanted to say thank you for what you're doing uh your inspiration it's been great working alongside you i'm just watching you to be fair i was just a, i was just a bystander watching well, i thoroughly enjoyed it it was brilliant absolutely brilliant but guys we are back on the 28th uh christmas special we've got uh bill hughes is coming on as our guest i've managed to coerce bill into coming on <laughs> a busy man so look out for that that's back on the 28th and then in the new year we are on our new time at eight o'clock bi-weekly again every other week so we're looking forward to that and again bill is on in the next half an hour so look out for that but from richard and myself thank you so much richard startle for coming on tonight thank you paul it's been a privilege yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure thank you so much bye everyone we'll see you all very soon and if i see you before everyone happy christmas happy christmas and a brilliant new year it's that time of year. Bye, everyone. Take care.